you so much for taking your time to be here at the row. Welcome again for being here with us. What a privilege it is for me to have this opportunity to encamp around God's word with you. And, and as always, I'm going to give my disclaimers up front. Uh, like I say, I don't know everything, neither do you, but we can find ourselves together around God's word where he himself will reveal himself to us. My first disclaimer is I don't know everything, neither do you. Second disclaimer is I'm okay with not knowing everything. It's really all right with me. But, but, but see, if you think you know everything, you leave yourself unavailable for God to be able to give you more than what you have. Also, I want to give some advertisements. Like I've said in the past, I'm not selling anything because I don't make widgets. But what God has given me by way of the ministry, we've developed products, both books, CDs, DVDs. Uh, we do seminars around the country and even locally. I would just ask that you go to our website at missionstomen.org. Now, this is the role, reaching out with word, but it actually is a product and it comes out of the ministry of Missions to Men. So here at the row, reaching out with word, if you'd like to get any more of our information based off the teachings that I have personally, then go and go and plug in. You know, go log in at missionstomen.org or you can send us an email at info at missionstomen.org or you can write us at Missions to Men, P.O. Box 93478 in the city of industry, California, 91715, and just address it, attention, the row. At least we'll know uh, where we're getting information from, and then we'll also know how to contact you directly. Before I get started today, I want you to know this also. Your prayers and support are greatly appreciated. Your monetary support is greatly appreciated. This, this ministry, Reaching Out With Word, is actually God's word being conveyed in such a manner that it adds significance and relevance to your life. Not me, but God's word. I would only ask that if it has been a measure of blessing to you in any shape, form, or fashion, that you would consider partnering with us on a monthly basis by way of your monetary gifts of love. Listen, we're going to start a campaign, if you want to call it that, Missions to Men Partners. And every month, for $25 a month, we'll make sure that you get products from the ministry directly. I want to partner with you. I want to get information to you that I believe is relevant enough to help you change your patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's Word on a monthly basis. I'll give you more information about it. It is coming, but I want to just put that out there for to you right away. And as the program is actually coming on, you always see the 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 church box. All of our products are distributed through church box. Church Box is a fulfillment service that we use, the ministry uses. And if you like information on Church Box, just let us know. Again, you can send us an email at info at missionstomen.org, or you can uh, go to a website at missionstomen.org, or you may write us at P.O. Box 93478 in the City of Industry, California, 91715. Or you can call us at 626-709-6861. Now, I don't respond to stupid. I'm just letting you know that right now. I don't even give attention to stupid. Stupid is not productive. And so we see in God's word very clearly, Paul talks about those who had fertile thinking or futile thinking means they had unproductive thinking. It says that they were caught up in the fertility of their minds, meaning they were caught up in unproductive thinking. I'm telling you now, I don't respond to stupid. And I'm just going to leave it like that and let's go. All right. So now let's go right back to the teaching. We've been teaching on David, and I've been teaching on David now for about a month, a little better than a month, and we've gotten to the place of the Lord of hosts. This is actually in 1 Samuel chapter 17, but before we do that, let's go to my thread, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. This is my launch pad. This is my springboard. Anytime I'm teaching, this is what I use in order to articulate through the rest of the Gospels or the rest of the Scriptures. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let's get there. Remember, Go get your own Bible. Do not take my word for anything. You need to be able to read this for yourself. I could be wrong, but you will not know it if you don't read it for yourself. So here in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This means that it's something that you and I both have to do on our own. It's not something that God's going to do for us. He's not going to make us do it. It's something that we must do for ourselves. So when it says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, it's apparent that you can do this or else God would not say, let it be. Now let's go over to 1 Samuel chapter 17 
And I'm going to read verse 45, and then from there we're going to go through the scriptures. And I want to enunciate and highlight the Lord of hosts. We've talked about it. We've talked about David going out to battle. We've talked about him seeing Goliath. We've talked about David even... Uh, 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 his brothers even not liking what he's saying. We talked about David being in front of Saul. We've talked about David taking off the armament Saul had given him. And David says this, he says that he told the uncircumcised Philistine, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And when we got to that place, I says we need to really go back and define what the Lord of hosts is. David's not just calling out a name arbitrarily. David's actually announcing to Goliath, the uncircumcised Philistine, if you really know who the Lord of hosts is, you know what I'm getting ready to do to you. The Lord of hosts becomes an action that's getting ready to follow based off what David just said. And if you understand that, even David himself understood it at a young age. And, and I'm convinced that a lot of us as believers in the body of Christ today, we read over the scriptures that were then, the old covenant, but they have to be for us now, else it's not relevant. So when David is enunciating the Lord of hosts, we need to go and see who the Lord of hosts is. All right, here we go. First Samuel chapter 17, verse number 45. And I'm reading from a New King James version of the Bible. If you have something different than I do, we will end up in the same place in principle, I guarantee you. Listen, just go read it. All right, just go read it. Here we go. Here's what David says. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear. And with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defy. And now at this point, we have to go and begin to go through the scriptures very meticulously to understand and identify the Lord of hosts. Remember, everything has character and everything has personality. So if he enunciates the Lord of hosts, we need to see what the character of the Lord of hosts is. And we also need to see what the personality of the Lord of hosts is. The character, of, the character of anything is what it is. The personality is how it acts. I'm going to say that one more time. The character of anything is really what it is. It's what, it's what the substance of that thing is. The sum total, the value of it. Its personality is how it acts. That's the difference between character and personality. So David uses a pronoun, a proper pronoun, the Lord of hosts. So once we understand the character, then we can see the personality. Here we go. So now the next scripture that we need to turn to is going to be the book of Psalms. Psalms 24. And we read over these last week, so this is a little bit of review, but I want to get to the other place where we didn't get to last week. So I'm just going back just a little bit, so just stick with me here. Psalms 24, Psalms 24, and I want to start reading verse number 9. It says here, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Verse 10, who is the King of glory? Now, here we go now. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Selah. Now, now, now David here is writing, David here is right, and he said, now listen now, uh, uh, here, here in Psalms, he's saying, hey, wait a minute now, wait a minute. I mentioned the Lord of hosts over in 1 Samuel 17, and I'm speaking directly to Goliath. But here I'm telling you what the character of the Lord of hosts is, and the character of the Lord of hosts is the king of glory. All right, here we go. Verse 10, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts is the king of glory. Now, last week also mentioned that if we just do an etymology of the word host, host means to, to have everything that someone needs. Or let's put it like this. If you're invited to a birthday party, the host has everything at the party that you need to have. You know, I know back in the day we had parties and, and you have to BYOB, you know, bring your own bottle. Now, now, don't don't play me. Don't get so spiritual that you don't remember this stuff. Okay, don't 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 start doing that. Don't get so spiritual that you spooky. All right. Remember back in the day, all of us, if not, oh Lord, not all of us, but some of us had an opportunity to go to parties that weren't just birthday parties in a Christian environment. Some of our parties were shown enough way out there on the edge, deep six, going way out kind of parties. 
So for those of us that understand that, our host would have a whole environment set up for us, and all we had to do was come and participate in what was in that environment. That would be the host providing that for us. The same way when David says, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, David understands what has been provided for him already, or else he's not able to say, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. In other words, I can't come to a birthday party that I'm not invited to. If you do, that's called crashing the party. But David announces who he's coming to the party in the name of. So he has an invitation. David has the opportunity. David has the covenant benefits to come and partake of the name of the Lord of hosts. Watch this now. Stay with me. Here again, Psalms 2410, it says, Who is the king of glory? Because it announced, lift up your gates and the king of glory will come in. Verse 10 says, Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Now we need to go over to Isaiah. Let's see what the prophet got to say about the, about the Lord of hosts. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah's gospel chapter 1. And I want to start reading at verse number 8. Isaiah's gospel chapter 1 verse 8. It says here, So the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard. Watch this, as a hut in, the gar in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, unless the Lord of hosts. Now, remember, the Lord of hosts is the king of glory. But here Isaiah saying, unless the Lord of hosts had left us a small remnant, we would have become like Sodom. We would have become like Gomorrah. In other words, if God's word had not been left for us, if we had not been invited to a party that had what we needed, we would have been just like Sodom and like Gomorrah. We would have been lost forever. Now understand now, we're still talking about the Lord of hosts. I want you to see the character of the Lord of hosts. I want you to see who the Lord of hosts is. And then we're going to see what the Lord of hosts does. All right? Because here's just a little inkling of it. And if there had not been what the Lord of hosts had done for us, we would have been just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Just the little bit he did for us was enough to keep us from being devastated like Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, stay, stay, stay with me. Don't go nowhere. Here we go. Let's go to another passage of scripture. Let's go to Amos. 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 <laughs> and like last week, oh man, like last week I mentioned that I grew up watching this uh, program called Amos and Andy. And uh, the, the main character was named Kingfish. And Kingfish, you know, this he was just a big con man. I'm telling you, the boy always trying to get over somebody. But I like those type of antics. And so when I see Amos, I always think about that. But, you know, anyway, when I get to heaven, I'm going to talk to Amos, not Amos and Andy. <sighs> Here we go. Amos chapter number four. Let's look at the Lord of hosts some more. We're looking at some of the, the character and the personality. Remember, character is what it is or who it is. What makes it up, the substance of it, personality is how it acts or what it does. Here in Amos chapter number four, I'm going to start reading in verse number 12. Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Verse 13. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, who declares to men who what his thought is, and makes the morning darkness, he treads the highest places of the earth. The Lord God of hosts is his name. Remember now we saw it was the king of glory is the Lord of hosts. Now we understand that the Lord God is the, the Lord God, the king of glory is the Lord of hosts. We got to put all this together to understand the character, what it really is. And, and you know, I know that some of you may be listening to this and you have a whole different idea about what the Lord of hosts is and you read it, but you really never really knew what the Lord of hosts was. Anytime you say the Lord of hosts, you're actually announcing some actions that are going to take place. You know, the word of God lets us know now in the new covenant says that you can have what you say or you can call those things that be not as though they were. Well, you need to call in the name of the Lord of hosts and then you can call those things that be not as though they were because the Lord of hosts got everything that you need if you call on his name. The Lord of hosts is the character, the personality, what he does. All right, stay with me. Here we go. Whew, my, my, my. Amos chapter number five, verse number nine, verse number eight, rather. 
He made the petals an omron. He turns the shadow of death into morning. He makes the dark as watch this, the dark the day dark as night. He calls the waters of the sea. He call he calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the man, that's deep. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. He reigns ruin upon the strong. So the fiery comes upon the fortress. Verse number 14. Seek good and not evil that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you as you have spoken. Verse 15. Hate evil, love good, establish justice in the gates. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Verse 16. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says thus. Now you go and you can see what the Lord God of hosts says. All of this would be his personality. Then it, all the way down to verse 17, it says, no, I'm not uh, verse 27, rather. This is Amos chapter 5, verse 27. It says, therefore, I will send unto you captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. So we see the King of glory, the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, the Lord God of hosts. This is the personality and the character. We got to understand what all this is. You can't just say the name of the Lord God of hosts and don't understand what it means. I, 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 I'm not being belittling or derogative or condescending, but oftentimes in the body where we find ourselves now, we're not taught very well and we'll read certain things out of the scripture. So we can't, we, it doesn't help us change how we think in order to be successful by using God's word. You must change your patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's word. Now I used this example before. See, when you read God's word, you're reading it face on and that's imperative to read it face on so that you can see what it says now. But at some point you need to turn God's word and get a different perspective. Now, it doesn't change the content, nor the context, nor does it change the scriptures. But you need to look at a different view based off where you live now. I never met Amos. I never met David, nor Goliath. I never met any of them. I never met King Saul. Listen, you've got to look at God's word and then apply it to your life where we live right now. That's changing your patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's word. Don't allow tradition of what you think the Lord of hosts is impact you believe in God and get the maximum benefits out of it when you can change your mind and know who the Lord of God, Lord of hosts is. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Here in Amos chapter 6, verse number 8, the Lord God has sworn by himself. The Lord God of hosts says, I abhor the pride of Jacob. I hate his palaces. Therefore, I will deliver up the city. It says the Lord God, watch this, verse 8, the Lord God has sworn by himself. Now, you understand how powerful that is, that you can swear by your own self? What he's saying is that, look, my word's good. No matter what I say, that's what it is. Most of us can't swear by ourselves or to ourselves. We have a problem with telling the truth. We don't want to lie, but we, we find ourselves in a place where the pressures of life on our mind will take a thought and then we'll lie, even though we know we don't need to lie. Just tell the truth. Man up. Just handle your business properly. It's okay. If When you tell the truth, the worst that can happen is somebody's going to know you told the truth. That's the worst that can happen. No, no. But if you tell a lie and they find out you tell a lie, then they know you're a liar. Okay, let's go back to the Lord of hosts. All right, let's go to another passage of scripture I want us to see. And now I'm at the place where this is some things that I partook of as I was growing up in, in, in uh, you know, the 60s and 70s. And uh, some of you out there, when, when, when I read this, you'll know yourself also because we all grew up in pretty much the same vein. I'm not saying vein, but the same thread from the, from the, from the uh, perspective that <laughs> we, we had cartoons that on television that's not like cartoons and television is today. See, the cartoons I grew up with, they were cartoons for real cartoons. 
you know, I grew up watching things like the road run and, you know, there was this big chicken that always walked around and then the chicken hawks and, and uh, I, you know, road run, all that kind of stuff. I, wa- I grew up watching the Three Stooges and slapstick comedy. And I can remember television by way of media. There were some things that just weren't allowed. I grew up watching Superman, the black and white renditions of Superman. You know, he'd always just jump out the window, and but you never really see him flying, not like the shows are today, you know, where they have the green screen and, you know, they can put the person into it like he's really flying. You know, you just see Superman jump out the window and you hear the sound, and you know he was flying. And then I grew up watching The Long Ranger and things like that. So these are the type of things that have become enamored in my soul. Just like yourself, there are certain things that have become enamored in your soul. That's why I have to teach us to change our patterns of thinking. When we read God's word and we see the word Lord of hosts, we have to be able to change our patterns of thinking to really understand the significance and the magnitude of the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts should not be read through just unconsciously without giving it the proper attention that it deserves. So as I was saying is that when I grew up, there was this claymation uh, uh, type cartoon out there called Davy, D-A-V-E-Y, and Goliath. Davy was this claymation uh, a kid who had a dog named Goliath and they always went around and anytime there was some mischief coming up Goliath would always get with David and say well David you know uh, I don't really know if that's the right thing to do it was sort of like his conscious talking with him uh, as well as it was almost like uh, the imparting of the spirit talking to the young man and so I grew up watching this but one thing I did not know is about the song that was the intro for that particular that particular uh, uh, claymation animation type cartoon. There's things that we hear and songs that we even hear today that the words of those songs go into our soul. They're interpreted by our mind. And then what happens from that is that we allow that to be a thought and become a pattern of thinking for us consciously and subconsciously. So, so, so consequently when we, when we see or hear that particular song, which is the intro theme for David and Goliath, that song was written like back in the 1800s. I mean, way back in 1800s. And what we don't know about that song is that part of the wording in it, the song is called A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And uh, this thing was written through the Lutheran church. And if I have this incorrect, look, write me, let me know. But I'm going to read the first verse, then I'm going to have some music playing so that you'll be able to get to it and understand what I'm talking about here. The words of the first verse says, As a mighty fortress is our God, a trusted shield, a trusted shield and weapon. He helps us free from every need that hath us now o- overtaken. The old, the old evil foe, watch this, the old evil foe, Now means, it says the old evil foe, now means, ah. And then it goes on to the second verse, but this is a song that that was actually part of Davy and Goliath. And I used to listen to this song, I would sing along with it, but I didn't know the extent of the words. Now means deadly woe, deep guile and great might are his dread arms and fight. On earth is not his equal. Then it goes on to verse two. What might of ours cannot be done, so when our loss effected, but for us fights the villain one whom God himself elected. Ask ye, who is this? Jesus Christ it is, O Sabaoth Lord, and there's none other God. He holds none other God. He holds the field forever. That word that talks about the villain one, it's spelled S-A-B-A-T-O-H. Sabaoth. Now that's now talking about the personality of the character of who the Lord of hosts is. And, and at any time, you can play the music in the background. I just want a little bit of it playing while I'm talking, and uh, then, then we'll be able to see exactly what it's talking about here. So, so with the music playing just a little, just a little soft in the background, I want, I want, I want to, to hear the, the, the actual tone of it, and then you'll know. But it says, uh, Davy and Goliath, if you've ever seen it before, you'll see what I'm talking about. But here, let's go to Romans chapter number 9. Romans chapter number 9. 
here in Romans chapter number 9. I'm going to start reading at verse number 27. Israel also cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. Remember we saw that over there before where if it had not been for the Lord of hosts, that remnant that was saved, we would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah. Then it says here, verse 28, for he will finish the work and short and cut it short on the righteousness. The cause the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. Verse 29. And as Isaiah said before, remember we read this over in Isaiah, unless the Lord of Sabaoth has left us a seed, we would have become like Sodom and we would have become made like Gomorrah. Now here in Romans, it translates the Lord of hosts into the Lord of Sabaoth. In other words, it says if the Lord of Sabaoth had not left us a seed, now it's talking about the personality of what it really does. Understand me? It's talking about what it really does. First off, we see the character that the Lord of hosts provides everything for us. Now we see his character, what he does. It left of us, us a seed. And Isaiah says, if it had not been for the Lord of hosts, meaning the character, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of Sabaoth would not have left of a seed. That's his personality, what he does for us. He gives us what we need. That's the Lord God of hosts. That is the Lord of Sabaoth. That's who David was talking about out there in the fields when he was coming against Goliath. David announced, he came and said, listen, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. In other words, I'm going to have what I need to take you out, man. Anytime we have the Lord of hosts, the Lord of Sabaoth on our side, we actually have been given an opportunity in whatever environment we find ourselves in to have whatever it is that we need to handle any situations in our life. Now, I'm telling you, that's a powerful thing to understand that you can call on the Lord God of hosts. That is the Lord of glory, the King of glory. It is the Lord God of hosts. It is the Lord of Sabaoth. In other words, when I call on his name, I'm announcing not only to myself and others what God's going to do for me. Listen, we're finished for the for this session, but I want you to understand that, listen, if you have heard anything at all that blesses you, I would ask you to partner with us by way of your monetary gifts of love. This broadcast is made available by the free will offerings and giving of those who support the ministry. The road reaching out with word, we are committed to bringing you the very best that we believe we can offer to you. And it's imperative for you to take it, apply it to your life and be able to change how you think. Listen, call on the name of Lord of hosts and then understand the character and the personality of what he really is. It's not some name that you just arbitrarily use without understanding. It's imperative that you know what the Lord God of hosts is, who the Lord of hosts is, who the King of glory is, and who Jehovah Sabaoth is. Because anytime you say the name of the Lord, it's automatically Jehovah and the personality will be Sabaoth. It will be God who gives me everything I need, the Lord God of hosts. Listen, repeat this after me. Just say a different future. It's possible for me if I'm willing to change my mind. A different future is possible for me if I'm willing to change my mind because, because the thoughts I take will determine the decisions I make and my decisions will define my destiny. Change my mind. And until we're together again, remember these words from Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen.